<coughs> Hi, I'm Rad Linux, and today we're going to be discussing good USB. Now, bad USB is a very popular implementation of the Flipper Zero, and it is based around Rubber Ducky Script 1.0. Uh, it is essentially a way to spoof a keyboard or a human interface device and allow us to inject type into a computer. This is fun to do, uh, but it's kind of a difficult one because either it's kind of underwhelming or overwhelming. A lot of the bad USB scripts are extremely malicious uh, and things you really shouldn't run against your own computer. Or they're, you know, you'll, you can only rickroll people or yourself uh, so many times until it's not really all that exciting. So one of the ways we can utilize good USB or bad USB is good USB, or essentially using the rubber ducky script in order to automate convenience things in our life. And what I've been doing here is using a rubber ducky script in order to download and install from source uh, Mango HUD, which is a very popular FPS counter, CPU, GPU info overlay for gaming. Let's say I'm having a LAN party. I have a bunch of computers. They're all set up with a fresh in install of Pop! OS, but I want the latest version of Mango Hut on all these computers. And uh, this is one way to automate that process and allow me to just basically plug in and press a button and install uh, from source a, a brand new piece of software. Uh, you'll see here I'm entering in my password at the very end, and that is one element uh, of this script that is uh, probably not the best element of it, but it's at the end. So it's, you know, you have to be plugged in the whole time anyways. Now let's hop into the script and let's see exactly what was going on uh, during that process. So here we are on this script. Uh, and I'm going to go just walk through it and I think we'll I'll explain some of the commands as we are some of the, the statements as we go. Uh, now, an REM statement, and ones you'll see at the top a bunch of times, these are comment statements. So everything after REM uh, is not a command that will be recognized by the flipper. It's just human documentation language uh, to allow us to explain what's happening, uh, what the, the file is for, as well as the different sections uh, of this particular script. So I have a title, I explain that is over, uh, you know, MangoHUD download and install, and, and that it's going to download MangoHUD source. Uh, it's going to build and install it, and it's specifically for Pop! OS. Uh, and this is an important thing to keep in mind. Now, there are a couple versions of Rubber Ducky script. Uh, I, like I said earlier, Flipper uses the 1.0 syntax. I'll leave a link down below to a page that describes 1.0 syntax. There's a, been a lot of advancements. Uh, 3.0 especially, I believe, has a lot of different functionality involving variables and actually being able to do like some uh, scripting and like for while loops and stuff. You know, there's a lot of possibility there. We're limited pretty much to just keyboard input. So let's take a little look see and let's walk through so the first thing we're going to do here uh, is we're going to uh, wait a second to initialize we want to make sure that the keyboard is set up properly uh, and it might take a second for the computer to actually recognize the new keyboard so we're going to wait just one moment in fact this is two seconds i believe it's mill it's in milliseconds and the lowest delay is uh, 500 milliseconds so this is going to wait two seconds two full seconds and then we're going to move on to our next section where we're going to open our terminal now uh this is where things get very specific and when you look at the like a fresh install or a fresh uh you know Flipper Zero firmware, there will be some example scripts in bad USB and there'll be Mac OS or Windows specific. And that's because different computers use different shortcuts, different keyboard shortcuts. And we are kind of relegated to typing very specific shortcuts. In my case, I'm using Pop! OS and we're going to use the super key and T. So uh, GUI or Windows, I believe, will invoke like the Windows key or the super key. Uh, and T is a specific shortcut in Pop! OS. If you're using like Ubuntu, you might use Control-Alt-T. Uh, if you're doing PowerShell for Windows, you, you'll use a different invocation. And you're going to have to know essentially what you wanted to type into the computer anyways. So keep that in mind. 
Uh, and then we're going to delay because we have to wait for the terminal to actually open. And timing is a very important element of writing scripts in Ducky uh, because it's going to just type. And if there's no terminal to type into, uh, we, don't, we don't delay just two seconds. You could be plugging into an older computer that might take a moment to actually initialize a terminal and you might miss it might miss uh, typing things, you might start typing ahead of time and you won't, it won't work properly. So timing is a really important element here. Uh, in this next section, we're going to make a folder uh, to clone our GitHub repository into. I like to have a separate folder so that my home directory is not just cluttered with different GitHub projects. So we're gonna use the string command. This is another incredibly valuable command uh, as everything after string will be typed in. I think it can auto case, so you don't have to use like shift or anything to case, just type in whatever you want after that, and anything after a string will get typed. Uh, the next command we're gonna do is enter, because remember, we're really just typing into it with a keyboard here. So if you were to just type something into a, sh a shell or a terminal, you would end up at nothing, because if you don't hit enter, then nothing happens. So we're gonna hit enter, uh, and then we're gonna change directory using CD, uh, into our git folder and then we're going to hit enter again. Pretty straightforward. Uh, and so now we're just really going to start using some of these commands uh, over and over again to type in the different things we want to do. You can see in this section we're going to clone a repository using git. If you haven't already watched my video on git and you're not familiar with it, go take a, a second to peek on that video, learn a little bit about github and wh uh, what the, the powerful uses are for it. Uh, we're going to use recurse submodules, and you should really get in the habit of using this when you do git clone, because uh, it's going to pull in basically all these kind of extra dependency type things that are coming along with git, and uh, with the, the GitHub repository that you're using, and so you'll make sure you'll have everything that you need in order to do the build properly. Uh, and then we're going to hit enter as we have to hit enter after every single time we type something in, a command uh, that we want to, to run. And then we're going to do another delay because you know the the if we start typing while git is doing something it's not going to register so waiting five seconds for git to actually clone the repository is important uh and you know you can be kind of tight you can try to tighten these up but be careful because if you get too tight and you go to a computer that is maybe less performant than the computer you wrote the script on then you again might miss some of the timing it's 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 okay to be a little bit wide with some of the timing uh, especially if you're just using this for personal scripting uh you know don't worry about the speed because it doesn't you're not having to plug in and run away or do whatever crazy stuff so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move to our new github directory uh, using another string and enter uh com you know a uh, statement to accomplish that and then we're going to install our dependencies uh, you know, in Linux, in order to build from source, we're going to have to have like a C compiler and Mason and some different development uh, libraries. And in particular, we're going to use pip as well to install another dependency. So I'm going to use apt, which is my package manager in Linux. And we, as a super user, I'm going to install. Uh, tack y will allow us to, uh, for timing purposes, not have to actually type y uh, at the end of this. And then where it's going to install all these dependencies. I actually don't know that I needed to add a delay here, but I did. Uh, and so we're gonna hit enter. And then we're gonna go and do this next command. Uh, what, would, what will happen is that this will ask us to insert our sudo password, because I'm doing this as sudo. I don't necessarily recommend actually leaving plain text passwords places. So this is one of those types of things where you'll probably want to leave it as like an insert your password here uh, until you go to actually use the script, then you can arm it with your password, uh, you know, maybe as, as like a copy of this file, arm it, uh, send it to your flipper, delete it off of your computer, and then, you know, uh, use, the, use it on your flipper and then also delete it off of your flipper when you're done, because you don't want to leave plain text passwords around. It's got to be a better implementation of this, but for you know, ease of use, I've decided to do it this way. Uh, we're gonna hit enter again, and then we're gonna wait for apt to run through so that we can also do a pip install, which is uh, using the kind of a, a, a Python uh, library slash software installer. 
uh, and we're going to install Mako, which is another dependency. We're going to do a delay. And you can see that it's really just, we're just typing things in. We're just typing things in as they go and it's automated. So it's significantly faster than you could ever type it. There's not going to make spelling errors. Nothing is going to get in the way uh, as long as you have the proper delays all set up. And then we're going to do Mason build, uh, Mason setup build, which is the, the modern syntax. And then we're also going to wait for that to get done. And then we're going to do our Ninja install. Uh, at the very end, you might have seen that I had to install, insert a password. That's okay because the device has to be plugged in the entire time anyways, and that's at the very end. So it's not like gonna really like speed you up too much. Uh, and I don't think I actually want Ninja to have sudo access for everything except for the very last portion, which is the, the install portion anyways. So there you go, that's what, that's what we were doing. Uh, and this was just a, a way for us to automate something we already, already wanted to do, uh, you know, and it's uh, not necessarily a malicious use case of Rubber Ducky, but it is a valuable use case of Rubber Ducky scripting. So, uh, you know, you can use the, the, the tools of writing these scripts to basically do anything you want, whether it's malicious or, or helpful. Uh, and I'm going to just let us uh, lead us out with actually watching that video from the beginning again so that you can see what's happening uh see the speed that it's happening uh now maybe you know you understand a little bit more about what we did there so uh so so it'll be a little bit clearer uh what you know what we were getting accomplished so here we are we've opened up the terminal we made our directory we're moving into our directory we cloned our direct our, our uh get uh, we've moved into that that folder. Now we're doing our dependency uh, updates. So look, we have to install all this different stuff to make sure on a fresh install that we have the right things. Uh, they're not here automatically in Linux because you know most common users are not going to need it necessarily. So you know you only install those if you uh, want to be doing builds or you need a, a C compiler. Uh, we're gonna yeah do our our pip install and then now we're now we're actually going through the process of of uh installing uh you know building and in, installing all of the the different things we're gonna you know all the the different elements of uh mango hud uh, i think this is actually the the, the true install and the, the actual compilation and yeah you can see on the bottom here that we're actually compiling uh, but yeah, so, you know, pretty straightforward. Uh, thanks for hanging out and watching this. You know, if you have any questions, please feel free to like leave them down below. Uh, you know, if you, if you have some questions, I recommend checking out some of my other videos. Uh, I do like to build my work based on the other videos and I'm not gonna necessarily start from scratch every single time. Uh, I, I feel like maybe, you know, you should probably be at a certain level if you're trying to attempt certain things. Uh, but either way, you know, I'm always glad to, to answer questions in the comments and, um, you know, and, you know, I, I hope that you take a little second to try and, and troubleshoot some stuff yourself. It's always uh, fun. And uh, that's, that's the fun part for me is troubleshooting. You know, you really want to take your time and make sure that you uh, go through the, the kerfuffles to actually understand what's going on behind the scenes and not just be kind of copying and pasting what I'm doing. But uh, thank you so much for hanging out. I'm Rod Linux, and hopefully I'll see you next time.